Yeah, actually, um, I am a member, I'm sort of a member not in good standing of the, um, the uh, Guy Writers in San Francisco, which is a gay male uh, group. Uh, there's Guy Writers Poetry, Guy Writers Fiction, and Guy Writers Playwriting. Mm -hmm. And um, Raiders, as in the football writers, team. Writers. Oh, writers. Sorry, guy writers. They're guy writers. Yeah, they're I, Raiders. I, they're pirates. I think Oakland. I think Raiders. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, no. Hey, it's a natural. It's a natural association. <laughs> but yeah, they're actually they're here in San Francisco, and um, that's kind of a cool, uh, cool group. Um, and back when I lived down in Long Beach, California, I was part of a group that was called the Thursday Poets. And this was at the time when the coffee houses were coming, or coming up because there were no Starbucks. There were none, none of the stuff that we see today was around in the, like the 90s. That, wasn't, that was when it started happening. And we were actually able to um, get one of our poets into every one of the coffee houses and start a poetry reading there. So we were kind of the poetry mafia in Long Beach for a while because you had to know us in order to be part of any of this stuff. And we weren't mean. We were very <laughs> kind. We were the good mafia. <laughs> and, um, you know, we didn't cut off any horse heads and put them in people's beds or anything, you know. Not Although literally. We did, no. But we did do some drive-by poetry, which was kind of interesting. We would drive and scream out the window. Of the I saw the best minds of my generation. <laughs> anyway, nobody got those. They just kind of stared at us like, what was that? Who was that screaming out of that car? So... Anyway, it was kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, now I have uh, two mystery questions for you. Oh uh, yes, I was wondering about these. These were submitted over uh, the internet. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew and I had put these out for people, and uh, we we got one uh, response uh, from a Carol Demkak. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's any relation. That's my mom. I told oh, you my really? mother. My mother would definitely send you something. I knew of all my fans. <laughs> I said I knew my mother would send something. Well, uh, these happen to be uh, two very important questions, uh, probably more important than any questions I've ever asked on this show before. Oh, no. So, um, <laughs> I think you might have already elaborated on number one. Who are your favorite poets and why? Yes. Well, definitely, um, well, I, you know, a lot of my friends are poets, and I love them. And, you know, I, Akaya Oaks is a fantastic writer, and uh, she teaches up at UC Berkeley, and she was in grad school with me, and... Uh, an, a person that I work with, Anina Lindsay, is uh, she's also a fantastic writer, and I, I'm totally inspired by my friends. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm always really interested in what's happening in poetry, and um, I, I mean, I'm influenced by everything. I'm influenced by song lyrics. You know, like there's this Keen song now that um, where he says he talks about he dreams in emails, and I think that's great. I was like, yeah, isn't that we're all we're all evolving to that point where we're going to be dreaming in emails? So. You know, anyway, it's it's kind of an interesting thing, but yeah, that's <laughs> I'm influenced by a lot of people. Hmm. Well, that's, um, the other question, question number two, uh, is uh, do I get any prizes <laughs> if I answer these correctly? <laughs> Uh, which poets uh, influenced you the most? Uh, well, I think you've uh, uh, yeah. discussed that. Um, but um, what about uh, uh, poets or people that you come in contact with on a regular basis? Uh, how do uh, people that you um, associate with... Uh, uh, Influence? Yeah, fit into well, the scheme of your... You know, the, I, I mean, I have, I've been with my partner for 14 years, so, you know, <laughs> every book I've ever written has always been dedicated to him. So he has a huge influence, obviously, um, you know, but in, in everything, everything influences me. Anything is p potential fodder for, for a poem. I mean, and, and because of the method that I was using to write this particular book, anything could have been the topic. It, not necessarily something that I experienced, but something that I was informed by the language that I was cutting up the pieces, how I chose the words. You know, I could be writing about being a 12-year-old and going off to cancer camp. Even mm -hmm. though I'd never experienced that, I was cutting up something that had these knowledge of this, and it had the mm -hmm. correct vocabulary, and it had the correct, you know, because there's, there's language that's involved with, you know, specifics that are involved with all kinds of different subjects. And, you know, if you don't know those words, you're not going to be authentic. And so mm -hmm. I can sound authentic even though I'm not. So in a, in a way, it's, it's like they always say, it's the grandest fiction. Writing is, is the great fiction. It really is. It's, it's you know, you, you try to stay true to the emotion. Mm -hmm. I think that everything I do is absolutely true emotionally. It might not necessarily be literally true, but I've never been hindered by facts. Hmm. So I try to keep things hmm. emotionally true. Mm. I think that's uh, about as honest as uh, any person can <laughs> get. <laughs> you try. You try. And, um, you know, I, I think um, 
uh, this whole uh, idea of authenticity that's mm -hmm. uh, it's contested uh, left and right and uh, I think will always be contested but um, it, we're, we're such a pluralistic society today that we have so many influences and mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're just made up of different many variety of fragments of uh, different people not mm -hmm. only around us but people we've read and uh, I, I think um, you know what is you know, unauthentic. You know, uh, I've never heard anybody argue well, that. My, my favorite, uh, my favorite quote about stuff like that is um, actually from um, Bill Griffith, the guy who draws Zippy the Pinhead. Oh. And Zippy once said, "Newness is a thing of the past," <laughs> and I totally agree with that. I, you know, I don't strive to create some. I don't do cut-ups because I'm trying to be new or innovative. I just like it. I like yeah. what it does. It allows. Yeah. It's sort of um, controlled aleatorism, which is controlling randomness. And so it's like there's this random element in it, which I love, which is these ways that language comes together in this completely artificial way. And I can manipulate it and turn it into something which is beautiful and which is poetry. These, these disparate images or, or phrases and fragments, I can put them back together and make them into something new mm. and wholly unique. Nothing mm. like it's original. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. <laughs> I like doing that. But... No. Would you like to share another poem with oh, our certainly. audience? Oh, uh, Actually, I, I brought some new stuff. Great. I have uh, two nice. new ones I'd like to read. Cool. Um, the first one is called Havana, and uh, I want to say that I have never been to Havana, <laughs> so this is, this is another one of those. But for some reason, this feels like Havana to me. <laughs> and um, anyway, Havana. <laughs> Up to my neck in the tropics, I eat sugared local crepe as postcards flap from the stalls. I'm anchored with pretty trinkets, necklaces for the dead, a blue toy. No one dies here. No one is ever old. I kneel by the shipwreck, that deity. Everything is speaking. I pray for young sailors and see them, their tiny pink shells striding towards me. The horizon wet on their lips. Mm. Wow. I don't know. It just feels like Havana. Havana. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> if I go there, maybe that will help.